Well, hi there, and welcome along to What's the Word in association with Ladbrokes New Panel. This week, new panellist, Sarah Lynham, guest. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Good a little you. nervous? Uh, yeah, a little flustered. Just, just, just getting here. Yeah, yeah just getting here. <laughs> Double yeah. traffic. Nicola, as well, you okay? You've risen from your sickbed to be here? I have, so if I start coughing, I'm really sorry about that. Nothing I can do. Good stuff. And uh, Brendan Duke back as well. How are you? You excited? Are you excited for the weekend's action? Very excited. I'm in a good place. You're in a good place. You and Brendan Sheridan, right. always in a good place. Uh, right, going to uh, look forward to the weekend's action. First though, Sarah, quick hello to you. It's been, it's been a tough enough season for you. There's an early stage of your training career, obviously, but uh, as you mentioned in your blog, it, it a tame lion sometimes this game. Uh, yeah, it's just, um, I actually kind of messed up in the blog there because I said... Um, my horses weren't sick, it was just that they were slow, but now they're sick as well. No, so, you? Um, yeah, I kind of jinxed myself a little bit. I had a load of dirty noses to look at the next morning when I walked down. But uh, I know they're just, it's kind of like riding out in the wind now. We're just trotting and like hacking. It's very boring. No entries to be made. Just letting them get just over it. Just calm down, let it pass yeah. through, and then yeah. hopefully it'll kick it'll on pass, from yeah, there. Yeah. I'm sure I'll finish with a flourish at the end of the season. Okay, cool. well, they'll all be really well handicapped, surely, by, exactly, by then. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I'm one to watch next year. <laughs> yeah, well, that's always uh, something yeah. to shorten the winter. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. Uh, Cab's going to go without mentioning because obviously you use the same uh, training facilities as your dad. Sophia, has she avoided the dirty nose? She actually, ha oh, well, she has, but oh, I don't you were afraid to say it. Okay. Touch wood, and I won't say anymore. She, she seems in good form. But uh, really nice to have, you know, animals of that quality around the place again. Yeah, even though like, she's not my string, obviously I see her every morning and we're all excited about her and she just seems to improve from race to race and it's just nice to have a quality animal to keep an eye on and watch her on work morning and that kind of thing, so something to be excited about. Yeah, and, and as soon as you get something to lie up with her, you'd be grand. Well, I think Terconnell could lie up with her on the gallop, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> he, he probably does too, in fact. He fairness. probably thinks Stable he star, Terconnell. Yeah. Dual winner last year. Um, what, what triple winner. A, triple winner. Yeah. Right. He looked like he bounced back to a bit of form at Fairy House two runs back. Yeah, he ran really well at Fairy House and um, we're just trying to keep him as healthy as possible for Leighton. That's his derby. That's his yeah. derby. Okay, yeah. okay. Look forward to that. Uh, looking forward to York as well next week. Nicholas, some prices ahead of York. Uh, what horses are you, maybe Ladbrokes, uh, looking to duck or lay? or Yeah, just, just the four that kind of stand out uh, in the lower stakes. Uh, I think Liberty Beach looks hard to oppose. It's looked very good over five furlongs to date. Um, and I think we'll do even better over the six. In the gym crack, Ab Abstemious is another interesting contender for Kevin Ryan. He bolted up over course and distance last time and showed just great speed. So that's one we want to keep on side. In the Nunthorpe, we want to be against Batash. He's in there at nine to four. Yeah, he's open too. You're, what? He's 0 from 2 yeah, there, yeah. so yeah. Exactly, so I just, he didn't quite look like his brilliant best at Goodwood either, so, and as you said, the fact that he's failed to make the first three in his two previous starts in this race uh, is enough for us to want to definitely go in favour of 10 sovereigns in that race, who was just amazing last time out in the July Cup. In the grain voltage, you're then Logician at 7 to 2 uh, is probably one as well we want to take on. I think we prefer Broom there. Okay, no, fair enough. Uh, Sarah, so if you had with Batash, you know, you're family associated with sprinters, but Tashik on a horse you'd like to train? He seems like an absolute looper, doesn't he? Um, like, I, I wouldn't turn him down, but he has <laughs> mental problems. So um, I think he's definitely opposable in, in yeah. New York. Um, he doesn't take well to the place. It's a track where you have to... Well, I don't understand. A lot of the trainers walk their horses across, but we always box the sole pair over. Um, just even across the track, middle of the track, and it seemed to keep him calm, but um, there's kind of a frenzied atmosphere there, and uh, I think something like Mab's Cross is probably underrated. She does well there. She Loves the place. Yeah, she does, and she's always kind of flying in under the radar. Um, I thought maybe Ten Sovereigns is not a five furlong horse. I don't know. Like he, he's not too bad over a mile even, so um, I really like Fairyland, but maybe they wouldn't like her to beat their future the stallion prospect. But, <laughs> yeah, um, that's right. Up. Like she ran a cracker in um, the King's Stand, you know, maybe if she'd run in the Commonwealth, she might have won that. But uh, yeah, she's one to watch, I think. What about you, Juki? What about the, uh, the Nunthor for you? Would you, would you be opposing Batash or would you just kind of enjoy the spectacle that is <laughs> the potential time bomb? I, yeah, I just have a policy, basically, of if Batash is running, I don't have a bet. Because if he gets beaten, I'm going to be heartbroken. Because how did he get beaten? I mean, and and if he wins and I back something else, you know, what are you backing something else against? He's absolutely machine. So, yeah. so, I, so I just watch. Uh, anything else for you at York that you're looking forward to? Uh, well, I am interested in a belated rolling of the big dice by Johnny G. Oh yes, the logician, the aforementioned logician who, who who Nicola mentioned by Frankel, Edward Mayer's produced a couple of decent horses. So it's a belated rolling of the dice because 
He obviously thought he was well handicapped off 90, and indeed he was. He won a handicap at 1 to 5. 1 to 5 <laughs> in a handicap. So he absolutely bolted up, and he looks a unit on the telly. He's a big rake and stride on him. He looks a proper horse. And the form actually worked out pretty well as these handicaps go. Now, obviously, it's a big step up to the Voltager and what have you, but I think he can take it. If yeah. Not, if he's a proper horse. That's fair enough. I mean, you got to love that about John Gosling. just doesn't turn down a soft handicap mark. You know, you can't. It's so but I thought he rolled the big dice, though. Yeah. But he, because wasn't was the horse who was um, second in the derby to Golden Horn, he didn't. Oh, he did run him in a handicap. He did he run did him did in uh, Jack Hobbs, and then he won an Irish sure, derby yeah. as well, yeah. Okay, okay. That's, it, that's it. If you have a horse as a stone well in, run them. You know? right. Uh, right, let's move on to the action at Newbury then. Jeffrey Freer at 2.25 is a Group 3 contest. Nicola, how are we looking on that market-wise? Uh, yeah, and Mirando is 11 to 10. Definitely looks very solid at the head of the betting. There hasn't been any opposition against him. He's going to relish the rain, um, as we've seen in a small field at Chester when it was just a mud pit. Trip's also a bonus, and I expect him to get back to winning ways here. I think the main danger is the Queen's horse, Sextant, at 100 to 30. He won at Windsor at Ascot already in handicaps. Um, obviously, connections feel he's ready to step up to group company, but in there at 100 to 30. Technicians, 11 to 10 as well. Um, but Miranda, it's a tricky little race, though. Yeah, would you be? Or do you think <coughs> Miranda's got the right chance here, Sarah? Or? Um, yeah, like he does. He does like soft ground. They're probably going to get it, and he's a solid kind of group three horse. But I thought they have, um, you know, maybe they could have soured him the last time. They, he has been highly tried since. Um, his horse <coughs> was kind of big up a little bit, and I thought maybe the Queen's horse was interesting because it's his first run in a group race, and Sir Michael Stout knows what he's doing. He swerved Royal Ascot, so maybe he had a plan, or maybe that horse is also meant to be a bit hot. Maybe he's yeah. avoiding the crowds, but um, just Ryan Moore and Michael Stout, I kind of um, put my faith in them more so than. Yeah, so it's a horse on the up rather than yeah, dropping down. Yeah, I think down. so. There's a few doubtful stairs in the race as well, apart from them, but he's, I can see the stars out of a saddle as well as Mayor, so. Yeah, he, he could he stay. stay. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. What about you, Jake? What do you make of Jeffrey, uh, the, uh, the Jeffrey Freer? Well, there's more big dice being rolled, Tom, this yeah. time by David Simcock with Durston who I would have made favour for the valuable Melrose stakes at York. I was sure that was the way he was going, but he's decided to pitch him in here into a Group 3 off a of marker 94, which it, it doesn't look wise, but he's, he's picked a really good spot for him because he, he wants the softer the better for him. There's plenty of rain around there today. He's going to get a soft ground. He, I think he'd have won in Goodwood. He just got worried out of it by a tough note, a much more experienced horse, but he ran a huge race. They were miles clear to third. I think he, I, I definitely think he will be a group horse in time, and I think given the conditions of the race tomorrow, he gets a three-year-old allowance. Miranda has a gr uh, group race penalty. I wouldn't be shocked. I'm six to one. He's a sporting bet to turn him over. Okay, look, uh, pretty wide open contest then over seven furlongs. The uh, the hunger for it. Who, who do you have? The safe voyage top in the market here. Yeah, safe voyage now favourite at two to one. Following money during the week, um, he had a very nice start to the season. He added the John of Gone stakes to his CV, um, and I just you know he came behind Hay Gammon in the Minstrel stakes on ground he wouldn't have enjoyed. Um, so. And with the rain at Newbury as well, expected, that will go in his favour. So he'd be my pick. Sir Dancelot is going for a two out of two in this race. Obviously looked really good at Goodwood when winning the Lennox Stakes um, and is in there at 11 to 4. Hay Gammon's then third best in the betting at 7 to 2. Again, I just have a little bit of question marks over the ground for him, but you know, given the yards form, you can't dismiss him. The one I like at a big price, though, uh, is Space Traveller at 14 to 1. Things didn't work out for him at Goodwood. He came sixth to, to Sir Dancelot, but he won at Ascot before that, and I just think the price looks a bit big, um, but he wouldn't want too much rain. Yeah, a lot of these very familiar with, the, with each other. Juki, what, what do you make of it? Oh, I thought the safe voyage was impossible to get away from. He's just so solid through this horse. I mean, obviously he wants deep ground, but he didn't get in the current. He's still only beaten 11 and a half by Roman eyes. That's really good form, and he should be able to prove he's, he's, a, he's a half a length uh, to, to, to swing around with the second that day, but on, on this different ground. Two to one, the bookies haven't missed him, but I... I I just think he's still too big a two to one. You see, yeah, that's fair enough. Well, what about you, Sarah? Do, do you like something against the top horse here? Or? Um, yeah, I didn't actually understand why he was favourite, so maybe I'm missing something. Um, it's kind of he. I think something like Sir Dancelot is more dependent. <coughs> has been a classy horse since the two-year-old career, like the whole way through. Whereas this horse is just he's improving this season and has kind of got a reputation building and building. Um, I think if. Uh, 
the trainer was in better form. I think this is his only winner in a while. Um, oh, yeah, David yeah. Ellswich. Yeah, he had another yeah. winner for a couple yeah, of so months. Yeah, he has my sympathies, and I don't really like to say that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, yeah you, you feeling uh, David Ellswich. the playing. underdog here, yeah. I mean, did the race kind of set up for him the last day a bit? With I thought, I thought Hey Command went too soon. I mean, obviously he's a front runner, but he did seem to go too soon at both the Kerr and and last time out as well, didn't he? Yeah, but he had Frankie on him before, didn't he? And he doesn't have him today, so that's kind of a bit of a negative as well for Hey Command. And I think, uh, yeah, I just I just think this chap has the beating of him. You know, Goodwood yeah. is a tricky track, but. Um, yeah, Gérard Marseille, white gloves to victory all the yeah, way. Exactly. Uh, on to the pattern action at Cork, then the Give Thanks stakes at uh, 4.55. I know you don't have uh, prices for this one, Nicola, but uh, Ternawo is one here that caught my eye, dropping back from uh, the Oaks into uh, Group 3 company here. Juki, do you have something to put up against Ternawo, or would you be with there? Uh, big ask for Ternawo to give three pounds to Delphinia, right? Possibly. Uh, Del Delphinia is the coming forward. She's been a very slow learner, this filly, and even in the Oaks, she was, this, uh, she was still a bit green and she got messed around a bit in a rough race, but still ran huge to finish fifth. Obviously, she's out of again. Uh, so and, and the more rain, the better. They're having rain down in uh, Cork today and it was already yielding to soft. So she loved the ground. She gets three pounds from Tarnawa. The Delphinia blooms tomorrow, Tom. I see what you did there. Uh, what about you, Sarah? Do you like something in the, uh, in the Give Thanks stage? Yeah, I'd be in agreement. I'd prefer Delphinia. Good and stuff. If she had a better race in the Oaks, probably earned a bit more. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm still with Toronto. I'm not, I'm not losing faith just yet. All right, elsewhere in the Cork card, Sarah, you like to own a horse that you, you actually wanted to buy in the 345? Well, like, she was never for sale when I had her on my wish list. <laughs> okay. um, elegant drama, Jane Foley has her now. Um, uh, I just thought she's been very eye-catching since she joined uh, Jane Foley, she ran a good race in Fairy House recently, that was a small field. And then I thought in Galway she was extremely unlucky not to get a clear run. So um, she has a good draw and I don't know, I think she's one, one to watch because she used to be a lot more highly rated and I yeah. think in the previous yard she was considered a stakes filly or a filly with stakes potential. Um, so now she's only rated 70, I would definitely yeah. keep an eye on her. So she could have 20 pounds up her sleeve if, if the Perhaps. original, if the original uh, assessments were correct. Anything else for you in the court card, Juki? I don't think they're Cork. I have a couple in England if you're interested. Yeah, I, I'm very interested. Okay, the three o'clock in Newbury, Graphite Storm. We've got three pounds for a narrow Newmarket win the last time. That form is working out. It's pretty solid. Um, his best form has come on easy ground. He'll get that tomorrow. And he's been rated as high as 94 in the past. So it, 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 87 shouldn't be too much of a trouble for him. And in Ripon, the Great St. Wilfred. The Great St. Wilfred. Yeah, I'm going to have a great... Oh, I love that name. I'm going to have a swing at the Great St. Wilfred. This Gulliver, 16 to 1. Um, I'm not really sure why he is. He, he's been generally in good form this year. He ran really well in what was effectively a race for second in the Stewart's Cup. He was a close sixth if you took yeah. the winner out of it. Um, I, he's proved that he handles Ripon because Ripon's a tricky course. He finished third there earlier in the season. He's basically sure to r run his race. His best form has come with cutting the ground. And I thought 16 to 1, he was a good each way bet. Yeah, I thought Vintage Brute uh, with the, uh, the three-year-old ounce as a dual listed winner as a two-year-old might have had a little squeak in that myself. Yeah. Uh, anyone, anyone else on Saturday, Nicola? Um, at Newbury as well in the Denford Stakes at 150. I think the favourite Juan Elcano is going to be very hard to beat, although we're still top price at 5 to 4. And then in the 3 o'clock, I like Rip or for David Ellsworth at 100 to 30. One we're keeping on side. Versatile ground wise. Yeah, exactly. He <laughs> likes the ground. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, another one I would pop up as well on the court <coughs> card, by the way, is in the 10 past 3 Son uh, Sonalia for uh, Mick Halford, who has some really solid form there behind uh, stable mates surrounding. Uh, right, on to the Sunday action. There's a uh, listed company from Pontefract, but we'll probably focus on the pre morning because it's probably the best two year old race we've seen uh, so far. Three Royal Ascot winners, but none are the favourite, Nicola. No, Earthlight is the French favourite at nine to four. He looked very good in a group three over course and distance last month. But the main talking point is that Frankie seemingly he's gotten off uh, ALE to ride Raffle Prize, which suggests that you know there has been rain over there, so maybe he feels she'll be more suited to the stiffer test than ALE. Um, so still, ALE's three to one. Raffle Prize will have her fans in there at nine to two, and then Arizona is ahead of Raffle Prize at seven to two for Ryan and Aiden, um, who won the Coventry as well. Um, although we haven't seen him since then, so maybe there has been hiccups. I don't know. Um, and then Golden Horde is in there as well, who won well at Goodwood at seven to one. It looks a great race. Yeah, it's an absolutely cracking renewal. Uh, do you have a soft spot for Raffle Prize given his vice laid power? Well, I, I wouldn't be biased at all <laughs> like that. Um, but like, even if I didn't care about that, she's been very impressive this year. Um, I think she broke uh, a, tr a record at, at Newmarket the last time, and uh, 
she like has serious speed. It's a, it's a really hot race. Um, I don't think the French have won it for a number of years. And I thought perhaps the Andre Fab horse was a little bit flatter the last time. Yeah. Um, because they did go quite hard. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think I think she's my idea of the winner. Um, and she looked like a Group One filly in the making the last day. So. What about Arizona? How is he? What are your well, thoughts on him so far? Well, he just kind of looked like a horse that might want to step up and trip the last day. Yeah. But he kind of grounded out at Ascot. Obviously, Aidan O'Brien knows better than me, and it's kind of interesting that he didn't run him in at the Group One in the Pura the last day. Maybe he was saving him for this race. I don't know. Yeah, he's, um, he seems to have quite a lot of quite four two year olds, just the way they yeah, started. Yeah, so. maybe he's just trying to spread them out that kind of way. But um, I thought he might be one that wanted a little further. But yeah, I'm that would be my yeah. initial assessment. What about you, Jiggy? What about the morning? You like it? Well, it's a, it's a cracking. We have to talk about the rain, though. I don't want to do it to you, Tom, but 15 mils on Sunday, it's already soft. So we're talking very deep ground here. My hunch is that A. Ali will be less inconvenienced by that than, say, Earthlight or Arizona. I think he'll handle it better. But I, too, at 9-2, to two, will plump for raffle prize because we know she'll handle the ground. I mean, you could ask her to run up Cable Street and she'd do it. She's just a great filly. She loves the game. She sucked up carrying a penalty to win a new market the last time she gets a fiddies allowance here frankie dettori doesn't look to be massive competition for the lead either give frankie a soft lead in france what could possibly go wrong it's just bon nuit isn't <laughs> it so uh, I, I i will go for raffle prize at nine to two okay doke anything else for you on the uh, on the sunday cards Oh, uh, well, if you want one uh, in the first in Ponty, just for your multis, there's a filly called Queen's Order. She'll win. The bookies be well aware of that fact, but you can stick her in the multis as an anchor. And I did that listed race in Ponty Frack because yeah. he asked me to. So, the Tapissery, who was still green when running them uh, a couple of decent Irish fillies in Carlisle. And that was over seven furlongs. She didn't look like she wanted a drop and trip. But more rain in Ponty today. I won't go into how many millimetres you, tomorrow. You but are, you but, are, but, you are Mr. Matt Aaron. You, yeah. All you're doing is auditioning for that Matt Aaron podcast. That is all you, that's the only reason you're here. The ground is very see. important. <laughs> but, uh, so the deep ground on the stiffest course in England, I'll take her to run down the opposition. Right? <laughs> the potential three-month chaser in time. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you have a look at, uh, did you look at the Ponty Fact race there, Sarah? Yeah, um, the Chiefly Park filly, um, Perfection, she ran well the last day. She was only beaten a neck by um, Billiston Brook. Um, she's a bit of an odd filly because she ran well over six last year, but she's not really travelling early on in her races. Um, there's a filly, I, but like she is quite interesting. I thought the race the, in Carlisle the last day wasn't the strongest yeah. um, black type race. I thought maybe that's why. It's, um, it's, it's, it is the season Irish for that. She went <laughs> over to try and plunder it. So um, maybe Red Balloons looks kind of interesting. She ran well after a break the last day. Um, I had thought before maybe she's just like a zippy two year old type, but she was good in a group two the last day, and if she hasn't bounced after that race she might go well good stuff uh right anything else for you on the sunday cards no that's your lot that's that's your lot well, i mean what what more could we possibly true, yeah want? that's plenty right? all right let's get our best bets of the weekend then and uh brendan Jiki, we will start with you and your traditional tricksy traditional tricksy tom i will nap safe voyage in the 335 in newbury because he's gonna win and i will stick him in a tricksy with durston in the 225 in newbury and delphinia in the 455 cork Good stuff. Nicola. Mirando for me in the Jeffrey Freer. Space Traveller each way in the Hungerford and Raffle Prize then in the pre-morning. Good stuff. And Sarah? Um, I three. think a double for Frankie in Deauville with Coronet and Raffle Prize. Um, oh gosh, they have to be on the same day, don't they? No, no. no. Oh, right, okay. Then Elegant Drama as well. Then. Elegant Drama. Yeah. So yeah, Elegant Drama. In Cork. Good stuff. Uh, my best bet of the weekend is Sonalia in the 310 from Cork. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week with more What's the Word. Thank you.